Meanwhile, the stage is set for the FIFA Women's World Cup final in Sydney, Australia. Spain's La Roja will face the English Lionesses for the first time at a World Cup final. It's also the first all-European final since 2003. ABC News contributor and USA Today sports columnist Christine Brennan is here with more on what we can expect. Christine, talk to me here, because Spain lost to England in last year's quarterfinal elimination at the Euros. So there's a bit of tension here. Who do you think wins this time around and why? Diane, this is a fantastic matchup and fitting for this tournament, the way it has gone bigger, bolder, the TV ratings, everything is a huge success. And uh, I'm going to go with England because I think at the end of the day, the organization, the um, the maturity of England, the way they play, of course, their great coach, uh, Serena Vigman, uh, the tactical genius that she has shown over this tournament and throughout her career. I think that that gets the better of Spain, even though Spain is so dynamic, the flair, the fun, uh, the young players, the just waves of great players in Spain certainly gives you pause when you're picking one or the other. But I'll say that England will win Let's go with uh, two to one, but it should be a fantastic match. All right, my in-laws are going to be happy with that prediction. So, Christine, <laughs> what are some of the key issues going into this game? You know, the storylines, of course, as you have a, a month, uh, Diane, now of knowing these teams and following these teams. You know, for England, they got Lauren James back after a two-game suspension. Um, she is their offensive star, but they did fine without her in those two games. So questions for big men about how she, who she wants to play and what she wants to do there. And then Spain, um, the storyline goes back over a year, or last fall, so almost a year, where 15 of their players, their top players, said they did not want to play anymore for the coach, Jorge Vilda, and uh, protested his tactics and uh, did not like the way that he treated them, some very serious allegations. And instead of backing the players, the Spanish Federation black backed the coach. So different from what we've seen in other, like the U.S. and the way the U.S. women have been treated. So it's troublesome. Only three of those 15 players made the Spanish team. And it will be, I think, bittersweet if Spain were to win. On one hand, great for those players. On the other hand, their federation could could uh, you know celebrate that, and in this time of celebrating women's sports and the empowerment of women, to think that Spain would be celebrating with the way they've treated so many of their players, that is indeed troublesome. Interesting dynamic there. Uh, meanwhile, the former U.S. coach, Jill Ellis, said the failure of the U.S. women's national team at this year's tournament should galvanize leaders to make changes and be a turning point in this sport in this country. What do you think she means by that, and what's next for Team USA? That's a great question, Diane. There's a lot. And Jill Ellis won two uh, World Cups and Olympic. Uh, she also uh, took the team in the Olympics. So, yes, you would think we should listen to her. A developmental, there seems to be a breakdown, even at the youth level. We see all those girls playing soccer on fields as you drive by. Um, that, how do you identify the best players and get them moving up into the system? There have been conversations about how that just has not is not coming together the way it is in other nations and certainly uh, throughout Europe. Um, then there is, of course, just the, the tactics and how you're having these good players, these great players, our best, our best athletes. Title IX, uh, you know, uh, has given us these um, you know, thousands, thousands, millions of great uh, female athletes, how you're using them and who's leading the way and what personalities are, are being listened to. So, yes, uh, Cindy Parlo Cohn, star of the 99 team, president of U.S. Soccer, and her team, they have a lot of work to do to identify the problems, what went wrong structurally from the bottom to the top and then top down. And of course, Vigman is one name that they're talking about, although England's saying, hey, no, no, don't touch her. We've got her signed up and we think she's fantastic. But there are other names out there as well. And certainly a lot of women's uh, names in terms of for women's soccer, women should be coaching women, in my humble opinion. And let's hope we see many more women prize to the top for the U.S. job and for other jobs moving forward. All right, USA Today sports columnist Christine Brennan making our producer Lewis very upset, I think, with your prediction. Hopefully Lewis is still in the control room. <laughs> Christine, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.